Welcome to IT Fundamentals. IT stands for Information Technology. In IT Fundamentals, we get introduced to computer hardware, computer software, databases, networking, security, and software development. IT industry is a very huge industry and if we deep dive into each of the components they all together have a different domain to explore when we talk about it as a base one generally works with different components like keyboard mouse scanner and various input devices and services through which data can be passed as input which gets processed using CPU central processing unit now this itself has a lot of other components as we will discuss further under computer hardware which is responsible for actual processing or actual requirement handling once it is processed it generates a new set of data to be transferred to the output devices via which end users can access the data like monitor printer speakers and other output devices understanding of IT involves understanding of different components involved in the entire system given a solution or a scenario you may use one or multiple components and different layers let us get introduced to these basic terms that consist of that constitutes IT fundamentals first is computer hardware Hardware refers to the computer's tangible components or delivery systems that store and run the written instructions provided by the software. So in IT industry, it generally refers to all the machines. Right? So hardware may be a bare metal, maybe in the form of laptop, a PC, a server or various other devices so these are your components or delivery systems which can be used to store the data it's kind of a replacement of traditional pen and paper which was being used for storing and processing any requirement so these hardware which can also consist of drives or disk can be used for storage there are various variations and this itself is a different domain that can be explored further to understand different types of computer hardware but basically you can consider this to be a component which sits between a uh, end user so if an uh, end user wants to use this hardware this will be used to run the written instructions provided by the software we will see what is the software in a short while which is a set of code and instructions which are executed on this hardware so the actual processing and storage will be done by the hardware component before we proceed let me uh, remind everyone once again that these hardwares require a power supply and a cooling mechanism as it may generate a lot of heat and everything 
at the hardware level is worked around only with zeros and ones okay. this is your low and this is your high so machine level languages understands only zeros and ones then we have the software component which is a set of instructions or data or programs used to operate computers and execute specific tasks most of the requirements are converted into computer softwares these are again of different types depending on the level and the kind of requirement they are fulfilling even a basic operating system is a software then we have softwares helping you to achieve a specific task like file conversion playing a media for example audio and video right so these are nothing but a different task requirements for which people have developed a different softwares and you can use them as it is so again these softwares there are developers who develop these softwares there are testers who test these softwares there are users who use the software and so on there are in numerous languages offering different set of features that can be used to write these instructions at different levels for example C C++ Java and others the next very basic component of many solutions is databases a database is an organized collection of structured information so the data or information can be of different types it can be structured that means it has to follow specific syntax mostly in a tabular format or the data can also be unstructured but databases mostly consists of data in a tabular format so when your da data is getting stored in an organized manner they are typically stored electronically in a computer system so this is a set of or uh, it's a organized collection so when you work with databases it's an abstraction of how the data is organized electronically that means using zeros and ones on the hardware and is used by database administrators who are well versed with a query language and different languages to operate with different databases for example let's say we have a movies database so in this there will be a table let's say we have table 1 and it is nothing but a set of organized data we have id or serial number name of the movie ratings zoners and so on a very important and popular way of organizing and storing and working with the data next we have networking in today's global world we cannot think of any solution without networking it's the world runs on internet and internet is called a network of networks because it's a global network of computers that are linked together by cables and telephone lines so these are called as networking mediums or connectivity medium making communication possible among them so you may have a different set of hardware that needs to interact with each other so 
couple of slides back, we saw computer hardware. They can be multiple systems altogether which requires to communicate with each other and for that we need networking. If you are dealing with only one system, standalone system, you may not need networking but in the world of internet where data is being shared across multiple systems, we need a network and for that network can be thought of in IT industry network can be thought of as a logical group of IP address. A network is a logical group of IP address. Which are then used to communicate among different systems who are assigned these IP addresses. Internet is also a network. This is the global network which includes everything and hence is represented by the CID notation of 0.0.0.0 slash 0. If we want a subset or a group of IP addresses, we can also represent them with some numbers, let's say 10.0.0.0 slash 24. This represents uh, what are the bits which are fixed. So in this case, the first 24 will be fixed and the remaining 8 bits will be variable and this is the equivalent of 256 IP addresses. So these IP addresses once they are assigned to different systems can be used for communication in IT industry. The next basic component is security. I know it's a very popular term in IT industry security refers to the methods tools and personnel used to defend an organization's digital assets so in information technology we have a lot of data in a digital form such as pdf formats identities credentials and so on when you're working with a system or solution in IT data must be protected at different levels and it's not just the data every layer of the solution such as physical identity perimeter network compute application and data you can implement security at every layer to enforce difference in depth approach there are various tools and services as mentioned at different levels which help the end users to implement security at every layer last but not the least we have software development once you have all the components ready in the form of security, networking, databases, software, basic software and hardware, we have software development which refers to a set of computer science activities dedicated to the process of creating, designing, deploying and supporting software. So it generally involves every layer right from a basic operating system dependency on hardware so if you look at a simple application in IT industry it will have dependency and configuration requirements for hardware software supporting software like base operating system and drivers networking component so that people can reach out to this application and this application can interact with other systems databases application and can interact with databases use it to store the data and retrieve the data as well as security 
these applications can be a multi-tier application depending on how the developer wants to go ahead with the development process this may be a huge process or a long-term process which are implemented with the help of different methodologies like agile and waterfall again it requires the knowledge of different languages and frameworks for the entire process to complete welcome to definition of cloud cloud in IT industry is a technology where hardware kept in a remote location can be used for various services by a person sitting in a different location when we talk about cloud the most important thing is connectivity the end user must have access to a good internet connection so that sitting remotely a person can use his or her own system and connect to that data center which is providing you the services the end user can make use of a browser or command line interface to access all other services so if you look at the definition of cloud cloud services are infrastructure platforms or software that are hosted by third party providers and made available to users through the internet so these are nothing but a set of services at your exposure if the end user has enough expertise they can control the entire infrastructure as well of the entire solution if not they can also make use of the platforms given to them where they can host their solution both in the form of applications or softwares even if they are not comfortable with the platform where they need to develop and build this application from scratch they can also make use of ready to use software as a service offered by the cloud service providers so in order to exploit and understand cloud computing the basic understanding is you as an end user is using the cloud services offered to you by connecting to those hardware over internet it will be a public internet in case of public cloud it can be a local internet in case of private cloud so what constitutes this cloud computing as an end user yes you will only be requiring a simple browser if you want to make use of the portal to access those services or if you are well versed with the commands you can also make use of command line interface now the basic building block of cloud is a data center data center can be thought of as a building okay so let me just quickly draw a building for you now data center can be thought of as a building where bare metals right hardware they are kept on top of each other so these are bare metals bare metals are nothing but the hardware so if you use any system they will have the physical component right which can constitutes of a motherboard ram rom 
right? fan and so on wires for example so data center is nothing but you can think of it as a building where bare metals are kept on top of each other which will be used for offering you various services and when it is done on a larger scale yes you can expect it to generate a lot of heat and they also require connectivity among themselves so if we we'll go by the definition of data center it is a large group of networked computer servers typically used by organizations for the remote storage processing or distribution of large amounts of data so these are nothing but various uh, types of services examples of services that can be offered using data centers or cloud the definition of cloud says it is a set of services offered by third party providers so how these providers are going to provide you those services with the help of data centers maintained by the third party providers okay so what is a data center it's a set of hardware bare metals kept on top of each other controlled by a power supply and a cooling mechanism so the two most important prerequisite in any kind of it requirement would be an uninterrupted power supply and a good cooling mechanism and so when you are dealing with a huge amount of data a huge amount of processing and various type of requirements they can expect a lot of heat getting generated okay so i have got a image of a data center for you right so this is you can see that these are the bare metals kept on top of each other it's it's a various set of racks which are kept up deep on top of each other controlled by a good cooling mechanism and a common power supply so what is a bare metal now in order to understand cloud in a better way we can compare it with on premises something which is there in your system in front of your or in your office in front of you right which can be physically accessed so when you want to use any service let's say storage you want to store some data you can store it on a pen drive for example right so in order to do anything you first require a physical component So if we talk about a layered approach for any kind of solution the first layer is hardware this is what is called as bare metal now if you have the expertise you can configure it based on your requirement if not you can also make use of platform as a service where the platform will be given to you by the service provider which can constitute of operating system and some basic softwares still you may not be able to directly use this hardware you may also require some additional softwares right so or application now in software as a service you can directly make use of the software itself which is being provided as a service for you we will be deep diving into saas pass and infrastructure as a service in our next lesson these are your different types of services okay so 
what happens in cloud is every component every thing right from your base hardware to your application and data will be hosted in a remote location using these data centers and how can a end user access it so if i compare it with on premises the end user will be accessing the entire solution physically whereas in cloud the end user will be accessing everything remotely and right? using internet so in case of public cloud which again we will be discussing in a further module it's public internet and in case of private cloud it can be your local intranet also cloud models in the previous module we went through the definition of cloud which is offering of services with the help of data centers which is a set of bare metals kept on top of each other controlled by a same power supply and cooling mechanism next we have cloud models also called as deployment models cloud deployment models cloud deployment model identifies the specific type of cloud environment based on ownership scale and access as well as the cloud's nature and purpose so these are different classifications done based on who is providing the service and who are the users so who is a provider and who is the end user in order to understand cloud models we need to understand the deployment process by going with the definition of cloud we know that it is a set of services which are being offered to the end users which can include the entire infrastructure a platform or even the services or software as a service now these are being hosted on a data center in order to use this data center remotely the end user only needs internet hence the location of data center is not revealed to the end user in most of the cases depending on who is the owner of this data center and who is responsible for maintaining it and who are the end users who can use the services offered by the cloud service provider csp based on these permutation and combination we have different types of cloud computing deployment models such as public cloud private cloud community cloud and hybrid cloud let us look at the definition of cloud models there are four cloud deployment models we have public private community and hybrid in addition we also have multi deployment model which we will see later 
each deployment model is defined according to where the infrastructure for the environment is located so it's basically based on two factors where is the data center and who are the end users let us discuss them one by one first up is public cloud public cloud makes it possible for anyone to access systems and services when i say anyone it can be anyone who has access to internet so public as the name suggests is open to a common people anyone who wants to use it can simply go ahead and sign up and the sign up process does not involve any prerequisite okay. they may use their any social profile as well to sign up to the public cloud portal public cloud portal create an account and get started you by using those services let us look at the definition public cloud is a type of computing where resources are offered by a third party provider okay so this has nothing to do with who is the end user which organization is using a cloud for which requirement via the internet and shared by organizations and individuals who want to use or purchase them now some of the common public cloud providers are aws gcp and microsoft azure right? apart from this we also have organizations like vmware alibaba and others who provide services to common people right? so in order to use uh, services offered by these cloud service providers one just needs access to internet and they can go ahead and sign up and create an account without any prerequisite it's publicly available next we move to private cloud private cloud is the exact opposite of public cloud it's a one or one environment for a single user private means the one who is the owner of a data center is also the user of the data center owner of the data center is also the user of the data center so it's not available to everyone it is not available over internet it may be available in the local network in the private network and it may be protected by a very powerful firewalls and under the supervision of the IT department some of the advantages it offers includes better control customization and security and privacy right so this is your private cloud which is also known as internal cloud or corporate cloud where all hardware and software resources are dedicated exclusively to and only to a single customer okay. it's a single but it can also be a group of customers belonging to the same organization but the key thing is the users will also be taking care of their data center that means they are also responsible for their maintenance power supply and cooling mechanism next we have community cloud community cloud can be thought of as a distributed system created by integrating the services of different clouds to address the specific needs 
of a community or a business domain it's a shared cloud computing service environment targeted to a limited set of organizations right? so if this is a private cloud okay it can be a data center so let's say this is our data center now the users can belong to so let's say this is my user one user two and user three they can belong to a limited set of organizations and so it's not everyone and it is also not only one single user as in the case of private clock it's a limited set of organization so the set of users is limited as well as the set of services which are being offered may also be limited then we have hybrid cloud hybrid is a combination of public and private it's a mixed computing environment where applications are run using a combination of computing storage and services in different environments which includes public and private so some part of the solution may be hosted on or deployed on public clouds like AWS GCP and Azure and some part of the solution may be hosted on on-premise data centers or also called as edge locations or in the private cloud also okay, so the, if you look at the entire solution it will be using a mixed computing environment now there is one more type of cloud model called as multi cloud so this is similar to hybrid where there is only one change right it's similar to cloud hybrid cloud deployment but instead of merging private and public multi cloud uses many public clouds so it's not restricted to only one public you may use a combination of different public cloud services offered by different cloud service providers for the entire solution now when you compare all the different types of cloud models that we have seen when to use which one okay. so if you compare all of them one is the management of the entire resources of the solution the other would be your flexibility then your cost and remember your private clouds are more costly compared to public clouds because the maintenance will be in your hand it's your responsibility to maintain the entire solution as well as and then different other factors around cloud services and we have security complexity reduced latencies high availability and so on so depending on the usage one can go with a different type of cloud deployment model so there's just uh, how the cloud is being deployed not the solution and the solution will be deployed by uh, professionals which may include developers and solutions architect using these data centers cloud services we have covered the uh, basics of cloud now if we look at the different types of services what is a service something that takes an input does a job and returns the output okay. in terms of cloud cloud services are various services which are being offered using the data centers maintained by cloud service provider so these services can be for various 
requirements like networking notebooks mobile applications PCs servers databases etc these services are applications so they can be ready to use applications or even the infrastructure resources without the final application right? so whatever is a prerequisite can also be offered as a cloud service but the key thing is all these applications and infrastructure resources are hosted on cloud service providers data centers so in order to access any of these resource or applications or services the end user must connect to those data centers using internet or any networking means we'll be looking at different types of services so before we go into different types of services let us look at a layered approach what is a layered approach when you talk about any solution when you look at any service to develop a service from scratch the solution can be divided into different layers for example let us consider a web application so the end user needs to use this web application and as a cloud service provider we need to look at a solution which can take a request web request and respond accordingly so bef the, before you even get started with writing codes and the functional requirement the very basic requirement is the hardware so this comes as your very first layer without hardware you cannot do anything in the bare metal that we call it the bare metal which is used okay, so in case of uh, cloud this will be nothing but your data centers the next thing would be the next step or the next layer would be your base operating system so just think about having the solution in on premises and what are the various layers and requirements you need to put before you can offer a web application or any service to your customer okay so now that your hardware is ready and you have set up your base operating system you are ready to host your application so this is your base operating system so the next thing is within the base operating system if you are looking for web application you will need additional software in this case it would be your web server and so base operating system need not offer you those server capabilities you might have to set up your own server when you're setting up the server and you want others the common people or your customers to access this application the other basic requirement would be your networking how will they connect so i can go ahead and add another layer which is a networking layer and the best component that describes this networking layer would be your ip address or I will just put it as networking okay so now you have set up a very basic server 
where the request can come but in order to process the request you will need an application right so the entire source code code written in various languages the front end the back end the application must be hosted on this server now this is not yet done because many times whenever the request comes they come with the data or they may be looking for some data right? so this application also needs to interact with another layer called as data layer called as data layer now somewhere at the application or the base os or hardware at every layer at every layer there are various things to consider when you are building a solution such as security monitoring whether each layer is working fine or not trouble this will help you in troubleshooting access control who has access so we know that there will be a lot of different types of users we will have developers we will have a database administrators, we will have network administrators and so on. Okay. And then this can go on based on your scope and complexity of application. Now when we are talking about this cloud services which are being offered to the end user, based on their expertise either they can go ahead and make use of this entire infrastructure right from scratch or if they don't want to maintain those infrastructures they can also directly use ready to use softwares or applications for their solution so to do that all the different services which are being offered over cloud are categorized in different categories right. so let us look at uh, what is a layered approach a complete solution consists of various layers right these uh, types of services are defined based on who is responsible for which layer so if I talk about the same set of layers and as an end user you want to use this solution in your system or your bigger solution say. if you want to configure and manage every layer right from your hardware and base OS as well this is categorized as infrastructure as a service now if you don't want to take the burden of managing the hardware and the base OS which is a very basic requirement you can let the cloud service provider handle the same and use that platform to build your application so the next thing, category is platform as a service now let's say you don't even want to build your application and so there are a lot of uh, standard applications like mail transfers cloud storage etc so if you directly want to use that ready to uh, use software you can also go with software as a service where you will only be responsible for the data layer and rest of the layers will be taken care by the cloud service provider so let us look at the three standard types of services apart from this the services can also be categorized in different other categories like such as code as a service function as a service automation as a service and so on right? we'll not deep dive into all this we will be looking at uh, the basic the most popular three types of services which are infrastructure as a service platform as a service and software as a service 
The first is infrastructure as a service. Infrastructure as a service is a cloud service model. Right? It's a model, it's a type of service which offers on-demand infrastructure resources. So the key thing is the bare metals, the resources to be used such as compute, storage, networking, virtualization to business and individuals via the cloud. You can think of infrastructure service solution as a replacement of your on-premise setup. Okay. Think of any requirement. What is the best, what is the first thing that you try to do is gather the entire infrastructure which can include the bare metal, the basic operating system, okay? a very basic setup which is given to uh, let's say a developer or a IT professional to get started. So for example, you might want to use a virtual machine. So you can specify the very basic details like size, uh, RAM, base operating system, IPs and so on. And then you, you can control all these parameters. This is what infrastructure as service refers to where you have a control over the entire infrastructure that you want to leverage from the cloud resources. So once you have set up all these values, a VM will be set up in the data center which is being maintained by the cloud service provider and you as an end user can log into that VM and use it accordingly. Here, the hardware security, the physical component is the responsibility of cloud service provider. But apart from this, what is the configuration and what is the basic setup? It's all taken care by or will be controlled by the end user. Now, what if the end user is not comfortable with those terminologies and technicalities right? and they still want to use those cloud resources? They can move on to platform as a service where a complete development and deployment environment is given for the end user to deliver or to build your entire solution. Okay. Because we know that for building any kind of IT solution, you will need a resource. You will also need environment, which includes libraries, uh, packages, libraries, uh, packages, standard ones. And then once the setup is there along with the hardware once the entire platform is set it can be leveraged to write your entire solution from scratch okay for example you are building a node.js application so we know that for building any node.js application you will need a basic hardware a basic operating system and the libraries right so your uh, note js libraries this entire thing can be given to you as a resource as a service and once it is deployed the end user can connect to that and get started writing the codes or the solution from scratch they can also import it it's uh, the choice of the end user. Okay. The next type of service is software service. Now, we have seen that there are different layers. We are moving from uh, on-premises to cloud. And as we move from there, 
on-premises infrastructure service platform as a service there are more number of layers which are taken care by cloud service provider so any issues with these libraries any issues with this operating system will be taken care by cloud service provider it's their responsibility if the end user do not even want to write the solution and they want to use ready to use solution they can opt for software as a service which are softwares hosted on the cloud and they are used over an internet connection via web browser mobile app or a thick client so th these are kind of apis which are available these are uh, softwares which are available generally they are very standard softwares if you're looking for a custom one you might have to develop on your own but if you have a requirement of a standard softwares like a mail exchange a photo collage or a storage database you can offer software as a service so the SaaS provider which will be responsible for more layers in this layered approach which includes OS managing and maintaining the software as well the updates and the infrastructure on which it runs so once you have a software as a service at your exposal when you deploy it mostly they provide you with an endpoint URL endpoint URL which is again hosted on internet and mostly it is HTTPS protocol or HTTP HTTPS the end user needs to directly use it in their solution so they send a request and gets the desired response and use it in their solution let us look at some of the examples in each category we have infrastructure service so we have Amazon Web Services Azure Google Compute Engine so all of them provides you a virtualization to almost everything so whatever physical is available in on-premises like NIC card IP address we have the corresponding virtualizations in different cloud service provider such as a virtual machine virtual network virtual van and so on so if you are looking for configurations and managing everything from scratch you can offer infrastructure service we have platform as a service where the environment is provided where you can build your solution like app engine elastic beanstalk right so these are offered by amazon this is offered by google and they provide you with an environment suitable for developing your solution now this environment can be configured based on your requirement you can specify the configurations and they give you the environment to use it for development process and if you also don't want to do that one can offer for software service where you can directly use it like Gmail slack office 365 right so they are a suite of products they are nothing but services ready to use right? it directly takes an input and gives you the output there is no development required if you have to use these services or applications in your solution let us look at some of the use cases of cloud having completed the fundamentals of cloud the different types of cloud models and types of services let us look at some of the major advantages of cloud which has resulted in many use cases 
we have a lot of success stories in which a person an organization or a group of people have benefited on timely adopting the cloud for the solution okay. so there are a lot of success stories where they have benefited there are a lot of failure stories where they regretted on not moving on to cloud when they should have done okay so before we proceed to different use cases let us look at some of the advantages first is cost saving the major portion of cost saving is done in managing and maintaining the data centers for the same solution whatever resources are required the upfront cost which is capex is very huge in on prem solution and compared to cloud the capex is negligible it is all converted to only opex where you will be charged only when you are using the services and resources hence the overall cost of your entire solution reduces drastically there are various calculators available where one can look at the estimation of the entire solution before adopting cloud for their requirement we have a lot of flexibility we have already seen different models and types of services which can be used for different requirements for the same requirement or multiple requirements the solution can be built using either only one resource or multiple resources so there are there is a lot of flexibility among cloud services which can be leveraged by the solution architects then we have so we have covered cost saving flexibility then we have 24 by 7 availability right one of the another advantage of using cloud is the power supply which is a kind of a headache in on premises where you need to pay electricity bill for the entire setup the servers the hardware and the cooling mechanism as well so now that the data center is under the maintenance of cloud service provider the responsibility and even the cost is reduced and the solution is made available 24 by 7 this is also made sure by having multiple copies in different locations this directly leads to reliability so having the solution in two different locations which is again uh, taken care by cloud service provider as uh, both the location location one data center and location two data center will be under the responsibility of cloud service provider so even if uh, one of the data center goes down due to some natural issues right some issue let's say earthquake or a flood it does not lead to downtime the end user can send the request to other location and get the response cloud is a global solution and if you look at the various cloud service providers they are spread across the world in different countries continents and geography now there's a huge power the storage and the number of data centers available which can be leveraged by the end user 
and hence can be used for literally unlimited storage and the good thing is you will only be paying for what you're storing so if you have a requirement of exactly 3.7 GB of data storage you will only be paying for this compared to on-premises where you may have to pay upfront for let's say 8 GB pendrive so this is pay as you go some other standard advantages of cloud include scalability consider what happens if there is a solution and currently it is handling a certain load now after one month the load increases or decreases Accordingly, the set of resources and the solutions need to be provisioned or deprovisioned to reduce the cost. This increase or a decrease in the amount of resources used can be automated and that can lead to auto scaling right. so there are different types of scaling we have vertical scaling and horizontal scaling which is made easier using cloud if adding a new server in on-premises takes around one month the same in cloud can be done within minutes cloud also gives you a lot of cost saving options such as discounts if you are looking for reservation for two to three years the cost can be saved and you can get a discount of around 60 to 70 percent to back up the data you will only need to go and make some few clicks and it's very easy to back up and restore the entire solution not just manually but it also offers you the option of automatic backup and restore when you are opting for platform as a service since the platform is offered to you by cloud service provider they will also take care of automatic software updates and the performance as well can be monitored can be handled can be scaled if required in cloud solutions so all in all I mean these are only few of the advantages offered by cloud services compared to an existing on-prem solution there are a lot of advantages which cloud offers let us look at some of the standard use cases where cloud has benefited the common person first the backup one of the major advantage of cloud is literally unlimited amount of storage it offers now IT professionals know that having just one copy of your data on site opens up to various vulnerabilities. What happens if there is a power outage? What happens if the disk got corrupted? Cloud services can provide mandatory default replication of the data, can also provide mandatory default backing up of the data, not just the data but the entire solution. So having a solution in only one location can lead to various vulnerabilities. You never know there might be a natural disaster which can lead to the solution not responding. So to overcome this downtime, a end user can go with a replication of the entire solution in another location or take a backup 
again there are a lot of configurations that can be done in order to save this backup in an archive tier where the cost will be very less okay. so let us not go to the options one which one has but the backup itself there are different types of backups available which can be explored different types of backups at different levels are you looking at a backup at OS level data level application level snapshot level etc or the frequency with which the backup is taken so only for the backup purpose also cloud can be used having the entire solution in on-prem the backup can be taken via cloud then we have test and development in IT solutions most of the time and resource and effort is put into testing and development of the solution which requires a lot of iterations so if uh, you are following agile methodology or any other standard methodology you can visualize or look at the time it takes now the flexibility of the cloud allows for environments to be built up different environments for example your dev test and production test it and torn down quickly so once you have done with the development and testing and now you are ready for release you can turn down the other two environments there is no need to wait months for provisioning a new environment which is there in case of let's say on-premises the cloud can be spun up in a matter of minutes it's very easy it's agile cloud service features are available which also helps in reducing the warm-up time to zero now what is warm-up time any server which is hosting a solution if the server restarts and why do we need restart what if a new feature is added right so following the development process if a new feature is added the server might be required to restart and once the server restarts it takes some time called as warm-up time to reach the threshold value the maximum performance which the server can offers when you have these uh, different environments set up so easily in cloud the warm-up time can be reduced to zero by just switching the endpoint URLs so if this was your production earlier without the new feature and you have this uh, testing environment with the new feature you can opt for a swap where the test becomes prod and prod becomes test now this was already up and running with the new feature where it was tested thoroughly is with, and now is being used as a production environment hence there will not be any warm-up time this is one of the major advantage which a cloud has to offer Another domain where cloud has brought about a revolution, I would say, is big data analytics. Before introduction of cloud, if someone wants to even get started in big data analytics, needed to think multiple times about how to get the data, how to store the data, how to do the huge processing, how to handle uh, complex algorithms and parallel processing. Even today, most of the companies and organizations are trying to collect and understand big data to make decisions on sales and marketing, R&D and more. So when it comes to 
or different phases of big data analysis storing managing and analyzing the data cloud is very very powerful which has this ability to handle different types of data different volumes of data at different rates be it a real time or batch data finding a solution in on prem is very difficult which leads to people or data engineers to use a different tools coming to cloud the entire big data analytics is now made available with the help of different services single handedly there are services which can take care of different phases in the same service and the costing will be pay as you go so only for the time that this entire processing is happening you will be charged and you will be only charged for the amount of data that you are using not more than that not less than that so before we wind up let us summarize we have seen some use cases around big data system development backup along with various features that it has to offer 